The 1,300 employees of our Firestone Des Moines tire plant welcome you to a journey through the process of handcrafting the best tires in the agriculture business. Our plant is the number one agricultural tire facility in the country and produces agricultural, construction, forestry, and off-the-road tires. The plant manufactures approximately 90% of all agricultural products that Firestone sells in the United States and Canada. Our employees craft high-quality tires from the natural rubber to the finished product. It's where Made in America meets quality. Each tire is made of many components that are carefully created to match its particular role in an excellent farm tire. Our plant tour begins at the point where natural rubber and other ingredients enter the plant. Just like a post office, the rail cars and trucks department receives materials, equipment, and machine parts that are carefully inspected and then delivered to their respective departments. We also produce and ship materials and compounds to other Firestone and Bridgestone plants around the country. The natural rubber, synthetic rubber, and ingredients arrive by rail and truck. Our indoor rail siding can hold up to five boxcars at a time. Ingredients come in from all over the world, primarily through the port in Louisiana. As the raw materials enter the plant, they are placed in the staging area, entered into our system, and carefully inspected. Green tags mean the materials are ready for use in making the components that go into a particular tire. Our incoming natural rubber freezes at 45 degrees, so when the temperature drops, we store the material in hot rooms at up to 115 degrees for seven days before sending it to the mixing department. Two elevators deliver materials up to the mixing department. It is vital that we have the right ingredients on time and in place for the manufacture of a certain type of tire. All the ingredients that go into the many rubber compounds for each tire are now delivered to the mixing department. Here, they are carefully portioned and weighed prior to mixing according to a formula for each component. The high-grade formulas for our rubber components are created by the Bridgestone Tech Center in Akron, Ohio. The mixing process begins with bales of natural rubber being added robotically along with its ingredients to the conveyor. The conveyor has scales underneath so all material can be easily measured in the correct proportion. A formula can call for different ingredients at different stages of the mixing process. Synthetic rubber, resins, antioxidants, three-way carbon black, waxes and oils are mixed with natural rubber in our huge Banbury, blending the mixture into a rubber compound for each part of a tire. The mixing process is carefully heated and timed per the specifications for that compound. After the initial mix, curatives are added in a final mixing phase. Curatives aid in bonding all materials during the vulcanizing or curing process and must be added to the final mix at a lower temperature. We make 60 different rubber compounds for our use and use by other plants around the country. As the mixing process is complete, the new material goes into a flattening mill and then into a mill that cuts it to size. The slab rubber is marked for its specific use in each tire. After testing, the rubber will be moved to the department that will cut, shape, and extrude it for the role it's going to play as a new Firestone tire. Before the rubber components move on, they must be tested in our MRC lab. During the testing, samples of each batch of mixed rubber must meet specific standards. A sample from each batch of rubber is individually cured and checked for its specific gravity along with other chemical properties and will get either a pass or a fail warning. To maintain our high quality standards and the integrity of our brand, we go to great lengths to make sure that all the materials that go into our products are never substandard. The raw materials are now moved to two different departments, calendaring and extrusion and sidewalls. The 
The calendaring department is where the body plies are made. This is where high-strength nylon fabric is sandwiched between two sheets of rubber using pressure and heat. This process produces a strong, durable composite ply or belt that makes up the body of the tire. We start by milling rubber into rolls and then, as the fabric goes through two mills, the rubber is applied to both sides. After the rubber has been applied, the new material will go through a series of cooling drums before the wind-up. We utilize 22 different fabrics in different gauges for the various tires that are made here. This process provides the structure and strength necessary for the harshest agriculture conditions. In the stock cutting and banner department, the calendared material is now cut into specific widths and biases, depending on the specification of the tire. These finished components will make up all the body plies that go into a tire. The material is loaded in the back of the cutting machine and spread through the rollers which carry it to the banner or knife. The material is rolled out and then cut into the size of a particular part in a tire. The machine checks the width and looks for any imperfections in the rubber or for bare cords. If an irregularity is found, the machine shuts down. The imperfection is cut out and the material re-spliced. From there, it goes to the wind-up where it is automatically centered into the liner. Once it's rolled up, it will get tagged with information about the material used in it and the machine it was run on. The roll of cutout components is now ready to go to the build or tire room where they will be used in forming a carcass or green tire. Tires are held onto a wheel by the inner rim or bead of the tire. Wires make up the internal part of the bead that's produced in the wire winding or bead department. Different strands for different plies are wound in a circle for the size tire that it will be joined with. As the wire bead is formed, it will get bead filler and reinforce before reels go through a festoon and extruder where rubber will be adhered to the wire. Now the bead is ready for the build or tire room. And while the body plies are being made and cut in the calendaring department, the sidewalls and treads are being made in the extrusion and sidewall department. From here, we move to the extrusion and sidewall department where the strongest rubber is extruded into sheets that will form the body of the tire. The main components are sidewalls and treads. Warm rubber is run through mills to soften and combine it with other kinds of rubber for a specific tire. It's then pushed through an extruder for shaping. Then, it's cut to the correct length, size, and weight, and as it cools, it's put in a tray that will then go to the tire builders. Special dies are used to cut the rubber into the right size for the sidewall of a specific tire. Quality checks are continually performed by the MRC lab to make sure the products meet the standards. Now it's time for all components to meet in the tire room. Scheduling makes it possible for all the parts of a particular run of tires to show up in the build area at the same time. The process begins by placing the material on the drum that will turn up and become the sidewall of the tire. The operator stitches the two ends together so they won't come apart. The shaper which is around the bead portion of the tire goes on next. The inner liner or gum that makes a tire hold air is next. It ties into the shaper and sidewall, and when it's turned up, seals it all. Next will come the 1 to 6 body plies depending on the tire and then up to 6 tread plies. A body ply goes over the whole tire and ties it all together in one casing. Guide lights tell the operator where each ply should land. The plies can be centered or offset depending on the needs of the tire. Next comes the inner sidewall. The machine will stitch it down and seal all the parts together. The beads move onto the drum to meet the sidewalls, and the machine will stitch the sidewall to them. The inner sidewalls are now added and stitched down. Air inflates the inner liner and then the bladder outside the drum pushes up the sidewalls. The casing is inflated, the tread goes on, and then the outer sidewalls go up. The tread pack is prepared and then gets mated together with the casing and stitched into place. The unloader removes the tire and it gets stored in the tub.
As the raw or green casing is finished, it will move into the curing department where it will be seeded into a giant mold for the exact tire it will become. The loader carries the green tire into the huge molds over the bag assembly. Next, we scan the tire into the press which maintains lot tracing for the components used in the tire, what press it went into, who laid it, and when it was cured. Each press is equipped with computers that monitor shaping and temperature. As the casing is sealed in the press, heat, pressure, and steam fuse the components together in a process called vulcanizing. During this process, an inflatable bladder expands inside the casing to press it into the correct shape. The heat and pressure over time melt and mold the carcass into the perfect shape. When the press opens, we strip out the finished product. We run 244 presses which take 30 minutes to 3 hours to cure a tire. The presses can produce up to 1900 units per day. The new tire is now ready for final finish. As the tires come out of the mold, they are transferred to the final finish department where each tire goes through a rigid hands-on inspection, assuring that it will meet our highest standards and the demands of our customers. Each tire goes through a visual and hand-touch examination. Tires are checked for 92 abnormalities, and then moved into sort where they are separated by size and ply rating and then carried to the dock to be shuttled to the warehouse. If there is a problem with a tire, it can be completely reworked with fresh rubber, pressure, and heat. The car's computer makes sure the tire meets the highest quality standards. The computer is a reporting system to track an abnormality back to its origin so the issue will not surface again. Our standards are loaded into the system and the computer shows the quality limits and then indicates what needs to be done to bring the tire up to our standards. The barcode indicates all the parts that went into making the tire. After radial tires have been inspected, they go to radial runout. Tires get loaded on the first conveyor on the number one belt, then to number two, and on to number three which has a centering device on it. It then goes on to number four where the spindle comes up and checks the tire in a spinning process. Here we look for flat spots or anything that could cause a ride condition. We will mark the low point on the tires and then the tires are smoothed out to yield a perfect radial tire. This concludes our tour. We hope you have enjoyed getting an up-close look at the craftsmanship and quality that goes into every one of the ag tires we produce. Thank you for your time and attention.